Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a regularly scheduled meeting of Sunderland Select Board. Today's date is July 25th, 2022. We'd like to call to order at 6.31. Good evening, everyone. The uh, first order of business is July 11th, 2022 minutes. I motion we approve the minutes for July 11th. We have a motion made. Seconded. And seconded to accept as presented the July 11th, 2022 minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, three zero. Jeff, on a new business, state primary warrant. Yes, we have state elections this year. Uh, the town clerk has prepared the um, primary warrant uh, positions open for election. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, Secretary of State, Treasurer, Auditor, um, Congressional Representative, Counselor, um, State Senator, State Representative, District Attorney, and Sheriff. Okay, so these are state positions or Massachusetts positions, right? Senator, Rep. Um, district attorney, sheriff. I think the district attorney and sheriff uh, and are lo local or regional. Okie dokie. So again, the clerk is getting us to uh, get this warrant out that needs to be posted. I'll entertain a motion. I motion we accept the warrant. That would post a warrant. Sign yes, it and post they, it. There you go. Sign it and post it. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded. Just so everybody knows is that, I, I mean, it is a formality, but it is kind of important. So is that um, when when we sign a warrant, we're, this is letting, this is trying to let everybody know that on the 6th day of September 2022, there's going to be a state primary. And... So the Democrat, Democratic, Republican, and other recognized parties have the option, have the opportunity to run primary elections on that date. If, unfortunately, in my opinion, we don't, most people don't take primary elections serious enough. This is where we vote on people that go into the final election that, that are on the ballot. So primaries are, are, I believe, are very critical things. So I would encourage everyone, you probably recently got a, a thing from the states that allowing you to vote for mail. If you can't vote for mail, you, by mail you can always uh, go in and vote, but primary elections are so very important. So we have a motion made and seconded to uh, sign and post the warrant as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, we have a 3-0 vote and the primary will be held on the 6th day of September 2022. Next up, appointment of election officers. Yes. Uh, the clerk also prepared a memo um, for the appointment of election officers for the term of September 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. Um, would you like me to no. read? No, it's presented by the uh, clerk, right? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. So I'll entertain a motion at this time to appoint the election officers. And election officers, there's a Democratic and there's a Republican. Democratic, Republican, unenrolled, um, as well as a high school student and out of town. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, appointment of election officers as recommended by the town clerk. I motion we accept. Thanks. I have a motion made and seconded. Seconded. All those in favor of the appointment of election officers signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, we have election officers. Excellent. 
so. Now we can have people actually work the election at the primary on September 6th. Next, oh, wastewater surveillance program. What do you know about the wastewater? So two things. Um, I spoke with a representative from the state. Uh, he said the state is covering one location um, in each municipality and they prefer it to be uh, the one, the location that captures the most number of sewer users, which would obviously be our wastewater treatment plant. Um, they said we could contract directly with uh, the lab that does the testing if we wanted to, and they thought it was about $1,000 a test um, if we wanted to do additional locations. Um, I spoke with UMass uh, representatives as well, um, and they also do testing. It would be um, much less expensive, uh, depending on whether, and that they, they want to, they need to do some calculations to find out exactly what the cost would be, but depending on whether or not we ask them to come out and do the testing themselves, um, or we go out and, and collect the samples. Um, obviously, it would be cheaper if we did that ourselves. That being said, speaking with the wastewater treatment plant operator, he said, hey, I don't mind. We have one guy that works at the plant. I don't mind if he does a couple collections you know, during the week at the plant. But if we're having him go all over town lifting up manholes and um, collecting samples, that, that would be a significant amount of work that we would have to have a longer conversation about. Um, in discussions with UMass, they said it's very simple. You, it's basically the collection is sort of a, a sponge on a string, and you put the manhole cover on the string so it's suspended, and then 24 hours later you lift the cover up and pull the sponge out and then send it back to the lab for testing. Um, so that is a possibility we just have to figure out what we'd be willing to spend and if we wanted to um, assign the collection duties to a town employee. So so can we talk to, can we talk to the Board of Health and ask them if they see any reason to do that at the present time? Absolutely. Yeah, my my take would be obviously to let's take the state's testing at the plant, but unless we're Unless it's looking like there's going to be some huge spike that we're trying to combat, I don't see any reason right now to be testing multiple sites at a, at a cost of town, uh, unless the, the health board feels that that's the, the, the appropriate solution. So, is the state the state the state saying that they'll test for no charge at one location? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that's what we're going to do right now, right? Yes. Yeah. And All right. Assume so. And if we need and if we need to, and, and talk to the board of health and see if they. They have a reason for us to, to, and we have we have an option. Yeah. And the the other thing, and I think this was we may have discussed this two weeks ago, but they said the data is really only valuable for n noticing trends. You're not going to be able to look at the data and say, oh, five people in the community have COVID or ten people. That they said it's really just more about how things are are changing over time, not being mm -hmm. able to get a specific number. Um, okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll reach back out to the state and, and confirm that we're interested and get that process moving and then talk to the Board of Health about additional locations. So ne your next up is your policies and guidelines on the, on, on the new business. Are, are you, you're just bringing these forward for us to review and vote on them at our next meeting? Yes, yep. Um, the one thing that I did want to mention, one of them is a flammable storage license hearing guidelines. And the, the reason that that came up is because there are two locations in town that um, have had storage tanks removed, um, which is the, I think it's Ben Service Station, at 11 Bridge Street, and then the, the Sunoco station, I think, mm -hmm. um, yeah. right by th 34 Amherst Road, maybe? It's I, yeah, it's next to, uh, next to Sherlock Sherlock Frosty. Frosty. It's next to the Frosty. Um, the tanks have been removed. There's 
there's nothing flammable being stored anymore in those tanks, but we have to have a hearing to discontinue the license. So um, once the <coughs> hearing is uh, approved, we'll have to schedule a time to do that, um, to actually have it, have the hearing and discontinue the licenses. Okay. All right, so you want to you review what policies that you're proposing, Jeff? So the septage rate hearing guidelines, the flammable storage license hearing guidelines, and then the notary services policy, the permit expiration policy, and the vehicle marking policy. Do you want brief explanations of those three policies? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, I think about a year, a year ago, six months ago, uh, we got notified by insurance that um, notary services were an, an additional rider on insurance, and uh, if we didn't have it, we were advised not to continue providing notary services. Um, we did want to provide that as a service to residents. The select board um, okayed adding the, the rider to insurance, and looking at other communities and what they they had um, as far as a policy for what could be notarized and couldn't be, um, felt it was important to let the public know because we have had some people come in and say, hey, can you notarize my real estate transaction? We say no, and they say, can you notarize and witness this? And we really shouldn't be witnessing. Um, you know, the, the witnesses should be people who know the person signing it, not necessarily the notary. So just putting all those policies in place. Um, the permit expiration policy was something that came up a little while ago um, in regards to, I think it might have been a sewer permit that um, was granted a number of years ago. And th just to clarify for everybody, any permit that's been granted uh, does have an expiration date after a year, but can be extended um, at the discretion of the permitting board. Vehicle marking policy, again, just for consistency of town vehicles to have them marked. Um, I think that one of the things that I just thought about is we probably want to have an exception for like unmarked police vehicles. Because um, right now it's now that I'm reading it and thinking about it, it says all town vehicles, and I think that, so I will add an exception and send that out. Um, but it's basically <coughs> so that our highway police fire vehicles are easily identifiable um, as town of Sunderland vehicles. And the septage rate, uh, hearing procedures and checklist, I think we talked about two weeks ago as well, mm -hmm. and so it's just clarifying the policy for that, or the procedure for that. Okay, so we, we should be ready to uh, vote on these next next meeting, okay? Yeah, so the vehicle marking policy, just, is there, I, I get, I understand the reasoning behind this, but is there any time frame built around it? You know, like if you get a new water department vehicle, for example, does it have to be marked within 90 days, 30 days before it can be put on the road? Good point, Crystal. Does the select board have a preference? I mean, I, I think that it, the ideal would be to have it marked as soon as possible, but we understand that. Say 30 days. 30 days? I think 30 days is reasonable, yeah. And then unless, arra unless arrangements with the town administrators. How's that? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's well, always going to be extenuating circumstances. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's easy to, you know, to just keep pushing it off. We'll get to it later. We'll get to it later. We'll get to it later. And again, I don't know if you need something in there about, um, you know, with the exception of a temporary vehicle or something like that. You know, you have... A borrowed vehicle or a you know rental vehicle you don't want to have to deal with getting magnetic signs and stuff to slap on them thank you
Okay. And then I have a couple questions about the permit expiration policy. Yep. I mean, this is for any type of permit, so right? So I'll use just an example of you have a building permit. Yes. That is going to expire within a year. I think building permits have their own expiration okay. date. So this one is just for all those that aren't covered under another policy. Okay. Or national law. Or, yeah. So regulation, yeah. So so is there a specific permit that you're looking at following up on what Crystal's saying? Are there specific permits that you were that were thinking about specifically? Certainly sewer connection permits. Um, I think so. And can I would I would follow up is if if we are looking for like should we and, and maybe we need to do is look at our sewer bylaws again to make maybe if you uh, why don't we do that too Jeff because be, and and I would think like on but it's a it's a good it's a good point but our if we do have issue a permit through our sewer commissioner's hat. We should probably should probably be in the bylaws, the sewer bylaws, so that the, if we do issue, issue a permit, it should a sewer connection that within a year it has to be used or or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I, I think uh, Crystal's point was well taken, and we should probably include in the policy um, that there are some permits that are, and you kind of create that by statute, by or regulation. Permits should be issued by the towns that do not otherwise have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Any yeah. other questions you have? In the third paragraph, it says permits not acted upon within the one year should be void. Um, would it, it saying such permits not acted upon within one year be a better terminology there? So that it's clarifying that, that we're talking about just the ones that aren't covered by the by other bylaws. Um, or do you think we, we can? My understanding from attorneys is that you don't need to use the word such it's it's it, sh it needs to be it should be read in context okay. but that's, oh, that's, 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 I'm happy to add it if I'm, you do clarify you know this better than I so I'm happy to defer to you on that okay we can look at that right Jeff yeah Good. All right, so we'll, ha we'll have those back for our uh, our next meeting, right? Yes. To, to vote on. But this is just... All right, old business, select board updates. Nathaniel? I got nothing. Crystal? I got nothing. Okay, select board updates from me. We had good news. Jeff and I, we were able to participate um, at the lottery for the Franklin Regional Housing Authority, um, the it was there. So there were over 100 applications. There was 62 applications that were preliminarily preliminarily judged to be uh, within the requirements. And then what they did because it was a it was a blind it was a a blind lottery, so they had five separate containers, and they read each of the numbers or each of the strips of paper that went into each of the and 
you could actually qualify under more than one, so there's a zero or some duplication of numbers. Then they folded them, put them in the appropriate container, and then Jeff and I alternated picking out. And if you didn't get on the first, because um, things will change because between now and October, that Jeff didn't pull your number because I would have pulled your number. So Jeff didn't pull it because, um, and, and actually Jeff is the one that pulled all of the Sunderland residents. Yes, I did not. He the way it worked out, I got the, I did not pull one of the Sunderland. So it was all Jeff. So if you got if your number didn't get called, it's because of Jeff. Call me. I was doing the other ones, um, but it was a pretty. It was amazing how detail oriented the process was. So do we know how many Sunderland residents? Nine. There was nine there was nine Sunderland residents in the Sunderland accepted pool. And I think we had what thirteen there were had thirteen units available for Sunderland residents? Yep. I think thirteen, 13 or 16, sixteen, something yeah. like that. So out of the people that applied there were nine eligible. Of the qualified there was nine eligible. There was nine ele there was nine that lived and or worked in Sunderland and there was two that used to live in Sunderland but were not considered Sunderland residents that were also in the pool. So then we we drew we drew and I would say there was what twenty to twenty five people that was there that had applied. And we talked to people afterwards, and they were they were really excited, very excited. So it it was it was a, uh, um, and as the director told us, they were uh, many highly qualified applicants. So that that was really good. Um, then last Thursday, we had the uh, FERCOG meeting. Um, I, I, what I did is I brought the paperwork from that meeting to Jeff, so I don't know if Jeff has a scanner, but he can, if you have a scanner, you can scan it and send out, send it to uh, Crystal and Nathaniel, just to um, kind of familiarize yourself with what the FERCOG does. Um, they, they only meet quarterly, so it's, they have a bunch of committees that meet on a much more regular basis, but the council just meets on four times a year. But they're going through an assessment program right now, um, trying to define, after 20 years, they're trying to define themselves. Um, so, and, and, I, and I understand it. Um, so they, they're looking, they were looking for a mission. They were, they're, one of the things they're trying to create is a mission statement. And it was, they had six, they, there were six that were brought forward, um, and there was one council member that was a really good wordsmith, and by just changing a word, um, it made made a whole sentence or a whole idea become much more clear. So they were talking. They're, so they're they're trying to define, you know, and they can't be they can't be everything for everyone. And, but, you know, for us, I mean, they, if it wasn't for the FERCOG helping with the, uh, with the uh, 120 North, North Main Street, we probably, probably we wouldn't, we're, they're looking at apartments actually allowing people in October 1st, right now. We probably wouldn't be there without their help right now. Uh, their help was instrumental and getting the South County EMS off the ground. So they're, they're, they, but both of those projects worked because of, in, in the River, River, Riverview, the River Park, Riverview Sorry. Park, yeah. the walk, would probably not have happened without their help. I'm in, but why those projects, and, and that's what we talked about, why those projects work is they, they had such strong um, 
local buy-in. So the town, the town came up with the ideas, but they, they, they were able to, to define a path, but it was our volunteers that made those programs work. And that's, that's really how to use a fur car. If you're just asking them to do everything, you're probably going to come up short. But if you're willing to, to put your, you know, put the, the sweat into making, and, and again, the river, the, the park people, they, they put a lot of sweat equity into that park. The 120 people put a lot of sweat equity. So it was good. So that's what we did on that. Anything else, Jeff? Uh, town administrator updates? No, I uh, would just underscore something you already said, Tom, which is that um, people's circumstances change. So if you did not apply for the senior housing, um, it's not too late. You can still apply and be put on the wait list. This was just the initial lottery. Um, they're going to do further investigation and all the people that were initially deemed eligible. Uh, in the meantime, people might find other housing and withdraw their applications. So uh, if you're interested, you can still apply and send your applications in. And they were encouraging people to do that um, regardless of the results of the lottery. And, 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 and I guess one of the things that I didn't say was that the numbers we poll also um, started to put in motion the wait list. Where, where you were on the wait list. So, so Jeff, Jeff is, is right. So if you think, if you're getting to be 65, 70, 75, and you think maybe sometime in the future when you get to be old, like 90, where you need it, you may want to put your uh, name on the, put the application in and get on the wait list. Or the wait list could take a while. So you may want to look, look, at, look ahead and, and and you may consider, you know, put it, still put an application in to get qualified or to learn if you're qualified. And I guess I did hear that there were some people that had, had applied for some of them that, that didn't qualify um, because of the, uh, the compensation. So anything else? No. Nope. Anything else? Questions from the? Yes, I have a... Just about the wastewater treatment plant. How that, how this uh, come along? Any reason why you guys wanted to start putting a surveillance program in? You mind, if I... uh, So we were contacted by Senator Joe Comerford um, to let us know that it's available and that um, Western Mass and Franklin County are underrepresented in that uh, wastewater treatment um, testing. We think it's a great idea, and especially it being um, free to the town, it made the real sense to, to sign up for that. So that, that's how it came about. That and, and uh, what what we learned, um, we know that at the University of Mass they do they do testing. They continue to do testing. They they've been doing it since the beginning of the COVID. So we reached out to the university and asked if there's an opportunity for us to partner with them. They came back. I mean, pretty quick for the university. Um, and it would be they they told us basically, yeah, if we can, we'd be we definitely do it. And they. They significantly less than a thousand dollars a pop. So, um, if and and also the board of health felt that it was a it was a positive, also. So between the board of health and and knowing that we have backup at the university, it's like why why wouldn't we take advantage of it? And and again, it doesn't tell you who. Does, it it only it, it tells you it it's a, a a precursor, and it's usually a couple two three weeks before. They'll start still start seeing traces and, and they and they can talk to the board of health or in our you know or the select board but for us it'd be board of health they you know you may consider because we're starting to see this uptick and 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 they can start preparing our public our public health people so. and also beyond our town it's also a way for the state to have a better idea of how things are going across the whole state yeah i was going to say i know yeah. greenfield does it i think montague's going to start doing it yeah so i saw that they're all going to help us paint the whole picture of the county yeah, you can. You can. It, it, it's 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 interesting, but with the testing, you could do streets, you can do buildings. You know, it's it, whatever, however more you want. So, or how definitive. Anything else? I don't know. That's about it. All right. 
Uh, did you want to do the uh, minutes of the? Uh, did you have the minutes of the, the uh, executive, executive session? session? Um, yes, if you want to approve those. Sorry, I did not put that on under minutes. Um, yeah, the executive session from June twenty seventh. Thank you, June twenty seventh. Did you all have a chance to review them? Yeah. Yep. So at this time, I declare that uh, releasing the minutes does not uh, significantly impact our bargaining position. So we can, so we, and, and again, we just try to get them out as quick as possible. So I entertain a motion to, uh, to accept the minutes of June 27th June for, uh, for publication. All right. I motion that we did. We already did. We already said. Have we accepted the minutes yet, as presented? We have. We, we didn't accept them in executive no. session. No. Nope. So we'd motion. accept it, and All then right. we. So, so uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I motion we accept the minutes from executive session June twenty seventh. Seconded. Motion made and second. All those in favor, signify signify by saying aye. 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 And Jeff, you can please release the minutes into our. Okay? Yep. All right, we're all set. One other one. Motion we adjourn. Perfect. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn this wonderful meeting. Uh, our next meeting will be on August 8th at uh, 630. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 We're out, Jeff, at uh, 703.